This may be the worst communion ever. The Bible teaches us that God so loved the entire world. I know every church doesn't practice it, but I want to acknowledge during this month of pride as we honor and celebrate the life and the love of those who identify differently than many of us. Here's the truth of the matter. But let's talk about it here on All Things Theology. Cue my theme music. All Things Theology, All Things Theology, we chop it up properly without an apology. Gotta get that theology to God, hollow because this is how we do it at All Things Theology. Yo, grace and peace, and welcome back to another episode of All Things Theology, where this is your host, K-Dub. Today, we're going to be talking about Pastor Howard John Wesley. If you are not familiar with this pastor, fun, oddly enough, this is one of the first pastors that I started to do uh, content, review content over over six, seven years ago, um, You know, just responding to some of his terrible theology and his Can I Push It series, uh, you know, affirming things like God doesn't know the future, uh, of course, LGBT, which we'll be looking at here today, and many other heretical issues. Um, you know, he actually, this pastor here actually affirms that you don't have to be a Christian to be saved. God can save people like Muslims, even atheists. So he has a, a, a very pluralistic or possibly even universalist, universalistic worldview. Just shows you how much uh, heretical he is. But I just want to give that background. But I saw this video, someone sent me this video where he was doing a Lord's Supper ceremony, and this is one of the worst ones I've ever heard, uh, and we're going to see why. Let's, let's, let's listen to it. Let's give some commentary here. The scripture that Minister Hippolyte read a few moments ago reminds us that God does not deal with us according to our sins. I thought I was in a Baptist church. I'm a... That God does not handle us based on what we deserve. Now we're going to see how this beautiful truth of the gospel gets actually twisted to perversion during the, the supposed Lord's Supper meal. Again, every Christian who believes in the Bible should be offended by what's about to be said here. So let's continue on here. That his grace and his mercy afford us privileges that we don't deserve. The Bible teaches us that God so loved the entire world. I know every church doesn't practice it, but I want to acknowledge during this month of pride as we honor and celebrate the life and the love of those who identify differently than many of us. Here's the truth of the matter. Let me stop you right there, sir. No, 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 no. Boy, ain't no way, boy. Boy, ain't no way, boy. I'm tired of your church. So during, so during Pride Month, this church, can't even call this a church, this building that meets under the alleged name of Christ says he wants to, and the, and the audience actually cheers when he says this, they want to honor. They want to actually not honor, not just honor, celebrate those who are in who are in sexual perversion as the bible calls it look hey we believe the bible around here sir we believe the bible and if the bible is our standard which it is not for him this is a man that is practically an atheist in the pulpit right you have many of these charlatans who get in the pulpit and claim to you know they they they, they are more than willing to say churchianity right christianese they'll borrow our phrases but they don't mean much of what we say. They don't mean much of what the Bible says. So this alleged pastor, Howard John Wesley, pastor of Alfred Street Baptist Church in Virginia, claims he wants to celebrate something that God states he hates. Right? God hates all sin. So therefore, we should not celebrate any of it. But I mean, if you think this is just as bad as it's going to get, it's going to get a lot worse. Right? It's going to get worse. So let's let's hear him out. That at Alpha Street, we desire to create a safe space for all of God's children. Let me just stop there. We desire to create a safe space for all of God's children. Couple, couple, couple reasons, couple issues here. The church is not a safe space for those who want to live in rebellion to God's word. Let me say that again. The church is not a safe space for those who desire to live in rebellion to God's word. Um, how dare you? Nor 
is those who live in rebellion God's children. You know, there's this theology that, that teaches that everybody's a child of God. When the Bible says we become children of God by faith, not just by virtue of of I mean, I mean, our rebellion. I mean, look, look at this. He's he's talking about people who who live in not not struggle. Look, let's make a category distinction. We're not talking about people who struggle with this, but who embrace this as their identity. They're the ones celebrating at the, the pride month and their their identity is identified as something as sinful. They wear it as a badge of honor. Now, many people would see this as a problem. if Someone called themselves an adulterous Christian. A fornicating Christian. Many people will be like, "What? Well, hold up, that's a contradiction." Whenever you put a sin in front of the Christian, you're automatically using uh, contradictory terms. Since a Christian is that which follows Christ, Christ didn't affirm sexual perversion. Neither should we, right? And so, there's a lot of category errors he's going to make. I mean, literally one after the other after the other. Again, that's just why I say this is a atheist in the pulpit. To love, to worship, to be seen, to be served, to be safe, to be in a place where they can honor God in their lives. And I Does this honoring God include repentance? I mean, you, you know, many people have a repentantless, a repentless gospel, right? Where we just want to tip the hat to Jesus. Yeah, I believe in you. And go on living our lives just like before. That is not what the gospel produces. My Bible says... First Corinthians chapter six, maybe it's in yours, chapter nine through 11, right? These will not inherit the kingdom of God. And it goes on to state that such were some of you. So these people who were living in this perversion, they repented. They changed their mind about these things. And they, I love what the theologian Gerhardus Voss says. He says, we think the thoughts after God, <laughs> right? That's such a, that's such a great phrase. That's what repentance is. That's what Christianity ultimately is. Thinking the thoughts after God. That's what we need to do. He, again, he's talking about love, worship, and honor while they're remaining in their rebellion. See, this is just mere uh, <laughs> name tag Christianity, right? We want, the, we want Christian on the, on, the, on the chest plate, on the back of the jersey, but we want nothing to do with the labor that comes with it. Now, I'm not saying the labor to get you into heaven. But I'm saying there are imperatives. As a Christian, God said, those who love me will keep my commandments. Yes, we follow God's law. We obey him out of gratitude for him saving us. Not to get into heaven. You know, many people will straw man the position that we're taking here when we say, you know, Christian obedience. Right. But again, this pastor, I mean, he's using a lot of Christian lingo, love, worship, Right. Celebrate even. But it's so disconnected from the Bible's teachings. I'm proud to be part of a church that respects that. I know that every church doesn't and that's fine. Um, if you have difficulty with that, I have tons of other churches I can recommend to you that you can go to. So, so he's, I want to show you how this is a disingenuous argument because he's using biblical words for why he's accepting of the LGBT. But then he says, well, if you don't accept that, that's fine. Well, if the Bible is pro LGBT, then we are obligated to accept that. But this shows how he's not even firm in his argument. See, this is what postmodern gives you. It's like nailing jello to a wall. Right. And so. But this church demonstrates their authority is not the scripture. It is not the word of God. It is their emotion. It is their philosophical reasoning. It is something else, but it is not the sure word of God. And Christians, you're going to be challenged more and more. Maybe if the church you're sitting in, where the pastor may stand up one week randomly making this argument, what shall you do? What shall you do, Christian? But in this space, we honor the presence of God and the image of God and all of God's created creatures, all of humanity, all of those who serve the Lord our God. And I am just thankful. So he talks about honoring the image of God, honoring, you know, the Imago Dei, which amen. But you don't honor the image of God. By accepting something, God has not honored himself. 
You don't honor God by disagreeing with God and what he said is right. Who are you, O oh man, to say to the potter, right? God has said in his word what is holy, what is profane, what is acceptable, and what is to be rejected. And here you have a man claiming to be a communicator of that message, rejecting everything that the God, about, the God of the scripture says. See, one of the problems with liberalism, and this is a classic liberal theology message where they don't agree with much of the Bible. And liberal theology fundamentally has to say that God, they are smarter than God. That's what they have to say, because this is not rooted in the word of God that he has revealed and he has uh, inspired on, our, on for us to follow. It, it, this, this is a sad case, and I, I've seen it with Howard Wesley over the years. He has not got more biblical. He's actually gotten more heretical, unfortunately. That we remember the love of God covers all of us. You know, the Bible says about the love of God that it restrains us, <laughs> right? And if we love God, so again, this, even this term of love, love does not mean accepting whatever you want. You know, the common phrase of the LGBT movement, love is love. Love is love, right? You hear that a lot, right? The world sings about love, but it has no biblical foundation, has no biblical standard as what God has said. Again, Jesus said, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. Love does not live recklessly to the commands of God. Love follows God, all of God and what he has said. Again, this pastor can deliver a and, and this was on a supposed Father's Day uh, message. <laughs> I couldn't think of anything more destructive than fathers than um, what he's teaching here. Very, very sad. That we are a loving church family. Jesus said, this is how you people will know that you're my disciples. We have love one for another. Again, using words of Jesus, but totally taking them out of their context. Again, this is the same Jesus who gave his view of marriage. Man, woman, right? This is the same Jesus who affirmed the moral law of the old covenant. Which Jesus are you talking about, sir? Because it's not the Jesus of the Bible. Again, just because you quoted something to do with love doesn't mean you've actually established this sexual perversion that you've adopted is now something that we should all accept or we're now being unloving. See, that's the that's the characterization that they want to place you in, Christian. If you don't accept this, you're unloving. You are bigoted. You're hateful. Sir, to be on the side of Jesus, you know, the Jesus of Scripture. You may be talking about some guy named Jesus somewhere. But to be on the side of scripture with Jesus is to be in the best place. Again, you can say things like love, honor, worship, but they are totally ripped out of its context of the Bible, which he doesn't affirm. Love is where we start. Love is where our journey as a family begins. That's why we break bread and drink of cup. The bread that we eat represents the broken body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus who is our Christ. Crucified and dead, buried and resurrected, ascended and interceding, one day to the glory of God returning. Let us break bread and eat together. You know, all that may sound good, right? He's doing the Lord's Supper, right? Taking communion in the name of Christ. But let me tell you something about the Bible says about the Lord's Supper, you know, what we call communion. The Bible says not to take it in an unholy manner don't take it in a profane way and i'm going to argue that what he just did was in an unholy way by accepting something god has not permitted mixing it in with the holy right remembrance of the lord's table this is something that's supposed to be protected this is something that repented people are to partake in and he just invited those who hate God's law in to the worship ceremony to partake in that holy, holy means of grace, a holy uh, service that God has given to remember his son and what he has done bearing our sin. But what he has argued is, therefore, we can live however we want. 
we will accept now that which God has said he despised, that which he called an abomination. This is unfortunate. It is sad that you have many people sitting there after that, clapping, cheering. When God's word was mocked, his table was profaned. And my friends, we don't we don't we don't laugh at that. We don't rejoice. We 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 are grieved. And I pray that you are grieved at what you just saw. But I pray that those would somehow watch this video. I know at one time, I know at one time, those in Howard Wesley's church was um watching my videos because I got I got invited to come and have a conversation with him. Well, uh it never came to fruition, unfortunately. But I, I challenge I challenge um, Howard John Wesley. Let's have that conversation. Let's talk about this issue. Again, uh, I can guarantee I'm more knowledgeable now than I was six years ago when I was invited by your secretary. And I talked to her on the phone about coming to have a conversation with you on the Can I Push It series. Let's do that. Let's do that, sir. Because as a pastor, it is your job to proclaim not whatever you want. The Bible says, do not go what is beyond what is written. Do not go beyond what is written, sir. What you did, what you did there, it absolutely did go beyond. Again, if you would like to talk, it's not that hard to get in. And it's not that hard to get in contact with me. Do I remain hopeful? We'll see. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Until the next time, grace and peace. Yo, grace and peace. Thank you for watching another episode of All Things Theology. If you enjoyed what you heard today, go on and give me a like. Subscribe to the channel. Hit that notification bell. I promise to give you weekly lives, videos, interactions, exposing false teachers, sharing with you, the viewer, my theological beliefs, things about the culture, and the Bible. So if you're here for that, come on and join us. Also, if you would like to support this channel financially, you can do so by becoming a Patreon member or a YouTube member. Links are in the description below. You can see content before it drops. You can also have Q&A sessions with also other Patreon members, YouTube members as well. So if you would like that, hit the description link in below.